If before using Z you worked in VS Code or a similar editor, you probably used the Live Server extension. It allows you to launch a local development server with a live reload feature. Today, I'll show you how to run a similar local server in Z for web development using several different methods so you can choose the one that works best for you. Hi. I'm Nick, and I've been developing software for over 20 years. On this channel, I share my experience, insights, and thoughts about IT. Before we begin, it's worth mentioning that the live server extension for VS Code has many additional features, but today I'm only interested in its core functionality, launching a local server and automatically reloading it when project files change. Let's start with extensions. If you search for a similar extension for Z, you can do this either in the editor itself or on its website. You'll find one extension with the same name, Live Server. It's a fairly simple extension. However, to be fair, it's important to note that Z's extension API is currently limited. There are plans to improve this API, and as far as I understand, that will happen sometime next year. But let's get back to our extension. Close the editor and install the extension we found. After that, go to the extension's GitHub page. I recommend doing this for all extensions. There's usually a lot of additional information there. As you can see, the extension is quite simple and is launched using command plus period. OK, let's return to the editor. As you can see, I've already created a simple project for testing. Nothing unusual, just an HTML file that includes a style sheet and a JavaScript file. So I press command plus period to start the live server. A launch notification pops up and I need to click on it. After that, the browser opens and the live server starts with our project. At first glance, everything works as expected. At least the styles are loading. Let me check whether the JavaScript is running. Yes, everything works. Good. Now we need to check whether all changes made to the files are applied on the fly without manually refreshing the browser page. To do this, I'll place the browser window and the editor side by side so it's immediately visible whether the changes are being applied. OK, I add a couple of exclamation marks. Yes, it updated. Now I'll add a new paragraph to the page. That updated too. Excellent. But we still need to check whether changes in linked files are detected. For that, I'll modify the message printed by the JavaScript file. Here is the message before the change. Now I'll add the word test at the beginning. Yes, that works as well. As you can see, the message changed without reloading the page. All right, that was the first method you can use to run a live server equivalent in Z. However, there is another one, and this is actually the method I prefer. This method involves using Z's built-in ability to create tasks directly from the editor. This functionality is described in detail in the documentation. It's quite powerful, and with it, you can configure and add many features to Z. But today, we'll focus only on launching a live server. So to do this, you need to create a tasks.json file, either in the Z's config folder or in your project folder, depending on your needs. In this file, you define the task you want to run. For clarity, I'll create this file directly in the current project. First, I'll create a Z folder and inside it, the tasks.json file. It contains a list of tasks. In my case, there will only be one. The key part of a task definition is the command that will be executed when the task runs. I tested several different command options, each using a different type of live server. Use whichever option you're more comfortable with or prefer. The first option is to use Python and its built-in HTTP.server library. This is suitable if you work with web development only occasionally and just need to tweak or update some HTML files from time to time. The advantage is that you don't need to install anything additional. Python is most likely already installed on your system. The drawback is that this server is limited in functionality and you will need to refresh the browser page manually. The second option is to use node.js and the live server library. This is a hood choice if you already have Node installed. As for me, I usually use bun.js instead of node.js, and with bun, you don't need to install an additional library. Everything is already built in. And the third option is to use Vite. This is ideal if you're creating a project, not just with plain HTML, but using a bundler, which, in practice, is the modern standard for building web projects. OK, let's finally run our live server. For this demo, I'll choose the live server built into bun.js. Now we just need to remember to save the settings file. Next, how do we actually launch this server? You can do it through the command palette 
or through spawn task. The second method is faster, and you'll most likely use it most of the time, but I'll demonstrate the first one, because in my opinion, it helps you better understand what's happening. So we open the command palette, type task spawn into the search, and select that option. After that, a list of all available tasks will appear. Since I added only one task, that's the only one available to launch. We run it, and the browser opens immediately with our page. Again, I'll arrange the windows so that the changes are visible right away. Now I'll add some text. OK, the changes appeared in the browser instantly after saving the file. Good. Now let's run the same test with JavaScript. I'll remove the extra text from the message. Now let's see if it disappears. Yes, it's gone. Everything works. Well, that's all for today. I hope you now have a better idea of which method of running a live server in Z works best for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon. Take care.